This is a tutorial for setting up your POS4S terminal once you have gotten the sign agreement from the merchant and you have uh, also uh, set up the account and uh, now you either are delivering a KTM terminal that you're change, transferring ownership or you are delivering a VIP terminal that you're transferring ownership or the merchant has ordered a terminal from their back office and that terminal has now arrived. Uh, they could do this or you could do this, but it's best if you come back to the store and help them set this up, uh, if, even if they ordered their own terminal from their own back office. You uh, must make certain that neither you nor the merchant adds any hardware or software to this terminal, that they do not try to take the terminal apart, that they keep it whole and uh, pristine. Uh, anything that they do, adding software, subtracting software, anything like that will void the warranty and they'll have to pay full replacement costs. The serial numbers are very, very, very important. Do not mingle serial numbers. Do not trade or swap terminals. Do not add extra terminals in. Do not set up uh, fake or test accounts. Uh, do not uh, do anything that you don't see in these tutorials. Only do what you see in these tutorials. The serial numbers are very important. Always keep the uh, serial numbers uh, together. The outer box has a serial number on it. It should match the inner box serial number, and that should match the uh, serial number that's on the base of the terminal. There's a pack two packages of cards that come in there, 50 cards in a pack. These are flex cards, and these are always to be kept with the exact same terminal. Mixing the cards will nullify them will void them out. Trying to create a test account will void out those uh, those cards, so you don't want to do any of those things. Only do what you see in these tutorials. Now we're going to get to the actual steps for activating a POS 4S terminal. And the uh, when you're looking at the terminal face on, in the lower left hand corner there's a bottom button, there's two buttons on the left hand corner, a long one and a short button. The bottom button, the short button is the on off button. Before you turn this terminal on you need to charge it overnight. You want to charge the terminal overnight, a minimum of eight hours of charging before you even try to turn it on. So before you even try to turn on the terminal you want to charge it overnight. A minimum of eight hours. If you uh, don't charge it overnight, then you're going to generate errors that are going to delay the terminal being activated. You could add extra days onto this if you don't do this procedure. So you take the terminal out of the box and you charge it for a minimum of eight hours. Best to do it overnight. Then once you've charged it for eight hours, then you hit the uh, bottom button. That little button is the on off button. You uh, press it and it will turn on. It takes a couple of seconds to turn on. So just relax and wait. Push the button and you'll hear it turn on. You'll hear it play a little song and then you'll see the screen come on. You'll know that it's fine. But you must charge it a minimum of eight hours prior to turning it on. When you first uh, turn on the terminal, let it settle. Let it do its uh, thing. It's got a little procedure it'll do. Uh, then you'll see a screen much like this and you're going to enter a code. The code is the same for all terminals. That code is lowercase a three times. So lowercase a, lowercase a, lowercase a, and then click on OK. So three lowercase a's and then click on OK. Uh, that'll bring you to the next screen. The next screen is the authentication screen, the login screen, uh, or it'll bring you back out depending on uh, of the updates that it's had, uh, you're going to see different screens, but in general you're going to see this screen where it gives you the dealer ID um, login uh, windows. And uh, what you're going to do is click on settings. So you're going to come down and you're going to click on settings. You're not going to click on anything else or type anything else into this uh, terminal. You're going to click on settings. Once you click on settings, you're then going to click on install Wi-Fi. So you'll click on install Wi-Fi. Once you click on install Wi-Fi, you're going to see the Wi-Fi networks around you. It won't look like any of these. These are just for this screenshot. You're going to need to, uh, you're going to see the wire, uh, Wi-Fi environment around you and you want to uh, join the network that is part of the uh, business that you are setting up your terminal in. Uh, so if you don't see anything, then uh, click on the refresh button and then look for the Wi-Fi that is associated with this merchant that you are 
uh, of setting up. And then you're going to enter the password for that. Uh, so you're going to find it. Let's say that it's uh, Hitron. You click on Hitron, and then you're going to enter the password to log into Hitron. But of course, it will not be Hitron. It'll be whatever the Wi-Fi is for the business that you're at. You'll click. You'll type in the password after you click on uh, Hitron in this example, and then you'll type in the password, and then you'll click on uh, Connect, and uh, that will uh, you'll go through a couple of seconds of uh, connecting, and then you will be connected. So next, it'll say um, that it's uh, it has found the Wi-Fi and it's installed it, and it'll say connected to uh, in this case Fritz Box von Wanlan. There you go. That's in this example. That's what it says. But yours will say something different. All right, and then you're going to enter the um, the merchant ID number or the dealer ID number. Uh, that's going to be a different number than 4351. You're not going to enter 4351 if you're setting up your terminal for a real live merchant. It's going to be a different dealer ID number. You're going to type in that ID, dealer ID number and the password that was created when you created that dealer ID account. So in the case where you're setting this up in a real merchant for real, you're going to type in whatever that dealer ID number is that you created and um, the password associated with that. If you're just doing this to set up a test account on your, your demo terminal, then yes, you do use the dealer ID number of 4351 and the password of 123456. That is a test account. If you want to demo your terminal to show partners or merchants how it works, that is what you use, dealer ID number 4351, password 123456. However, when you're setting up your terminal in a real store, a real Flex Kobe, a real merchant, then you want to use the real dealer ID number and the real password. Once you do that, you hit login. And once you log in, uh, you'll see these options. Uh, in general, these are the uh, only options that you need. And in order to uh, start using the uh, system, then you'll just click on checkout. When you click on checkout, then you're uh, doing uh, creating a uh, transactions um, based off that uh, dealer ID number and um, the QR code, uh, the QR invitation. You're now using the static QR code for that uh, terminal in that store, so they can kiss away, kiss like crazy. Uh, check balance is uh, where they check the amount of uh, flex monies or, uh, on, the, on, the, on the flex card. And then uh, settings is how you get back to um, the, um, the screen to set up the uh, Wi-Fi or if uh, you, you received your Bluetooth printer, that's how you would connect that and so forth. And then log out is log out. You'll be logging out. Uh, and you don't have to log out every night. You can leave it logged in and just power it down or whatever. In general, you want to have the terminal plugged in uh, during the uh, business hours. You want to have it plugged in and next to the uh, cash register. You don't want to unplug it and have it operating off batteries because the batteries may uh, die uh, throughout the day. Whereas if you leave it plugged in, that'll be perfectly fine for the batteries, perfectly fine for the terminal to be on all day. You have uh, terminals here that have been plugged in for uh, three, four months have never been turned off and they're perfectly fine. Uh, so you want to have them plugged in during the, the uh, business day. That is the best practice. Unplugging them during the business day is not the best practice. Okay, um, these are just a couple of uh, screens to show you how to enter the, uh, to do a transaction. So basically you enter the principal amount. So you don't enter the amount that has um, um, tax included, so just the amount before tax or in or any fees or anything like that, just the principal amount, you type that in and then uh, you either click on fl uh, Flex Card Collect or Flex App Collect uh, to have the person re uh, get receive their discount. Uh, in the future when they're paying with their Flex App or their Flex Card, they'll click on Flex Card Pay to pay with their Flex Card and in the future uh, the option of paying for this transaction with their Flex um, app, they'll click on the merchant will click on Flex app pay to uh, pay with the Flex app. All right, looking at the uh, procedure to uh, kiss a customer with the terminal, the customer will go to um, the iPhone store, the Android store, and download the Flex card app and they will uh, install that, download it and install it on their phone and then once it, uh, they'll, uh, they'll click on scan and then they'll scan the QR code that is uh, generated when the um, 
merchant clicks on a QR code. So to generate a QR code, to kiss somebody, uh, they'll click on that uh, generate QR code, and then they will generate the QR code. The customer will download and install the uh, Flex Card app, and then uh, scan this QR code, and then they'll have to uh, go through a couple more steps on their phone, adding their email address, and um, and then they'll be a customer. So they must complete that step of adding their email address in order to become a customer. Or the uh, merchant can hand them a flex card and activate that flex card. Okay, um, the uh, next screen talks about um, how to um, uh, generate a uh, uh, to execute on um, using the flex card to uh, make a purchase, and uh, they basically will uh, have clicked on collect with flex card, and then they type in their uh, their their 16-digit number. It, like for instance, if they use a flex card and they don't have their card with them, they can type in the, the uh, 16 digit number and then click on submit or they can scan the QR code from their flex card and um, uh, redeem their uh, their um, pay for it that way uh, when that comes along or for right now they can um, then collect the, re the discount using that scan QR code. So let's scan the QR code of the uh, card or the Flex app, and then that QR that uh, discount will come to that uh, to that uh, customer. Um, this is uh, just uh, paying with Flex card uh, option. They will uh, click on Pay with Flex card, and less, just like we talked about, uh, they can do it by either scanning the QR code on the Flex card, or if uh, they don't happen to have their Flex card with them, and, and they remember their 16-digit uh, PIN number, then they can use that and then click on Submit. Okay. And this is what happens, uh, the screen that you see when you click on Log Out, Logging Out. You don't have to do this. It's not recommended that you log out every night. Just leave it on. That's fine, perfectly fine. But if the person wants to log out, they click on Log Out. That means they'll have to log in uh, when they uh, start back the business the next day. But they don't have to log out unless they really want to. And once again, please remember that you don't want to add any software to this uh, terminal. You don't want to add any hardware to this terminal. You want to keep this terminal in pristine condition where you're not adding anything to it or damaging it or putting it into an environment where it, it can be damaged. That will void the warranty. And then a replacement terminal would need to be purchased at full cost. Thank you.